yes good morning children in last class we learned about the monuments so now till now we have learned about so many monuments like taj mahal qutub minar red fort so the red fort humayun tomb fatehpur sikri jantar mantar great a great sanchi stupa and chitogarh fort so we learned many monuments of india and some more monuments of india are found so today we are going to learn as about the new monument called mandu mandu indor so mandu is a small place mandu is nothing but it is ancient mandu in the sense of mandu the meaning of mandu is nothing but ancient ancient means purana kala ale kala do anta hadaduke we call it as mandu mandu is nothing but the meaning of mandu is ancient so today we are going to learn is about the mandu which is known as the meaning of mandu is nothing but it is the meaning of the ancient fort so i just read out once you can just check in your look in your textbooks mandu indore mandu is a ruin city near indore in madhya pradesh it is a great example of afghan architecture it has a large number of palaces like jahaz mahal indola mahal ornamental canals gateways baths and other buildings the jahaz mahal situated between two artificial lakes is a two story structure and is named as it appears to be ship floating in river so mandu now we just came to know the meaning of mandu mandu is nothing but the ancient it's an ancient fort and this mandu is located in indore so it is located in a place or city called mandu indore in madhya pradesh so where it is located it is located in a state called madhya pradesh in a place called indore so here this is also known as ruined city it is also called as ruined city what do you mean what is the meaning of ruined 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 is nothing but a wreck or destroy so here the meaning of ruined is nothing but it is a wreck or destroyed it is an destroyed place mandu is nothing but it is an ancient fort where it is found it is found in indore of madhya pradesh here it is an ruined fort ruined fort is nothing but in the sense of wrecked fort or destroyed fort so here you can just see the large number of you can just look out large number of palaces like jahaz mahal jahaz mahal ornamental tunnels ornamental tunnels indola mahal indola mahal ornamental tunnels jahaz mahal jahaz mahal jahaz mahal ornamental tunnels indola mahal gateways baths and so uh, these are the places so these are the places where you can just see number of palaces like jahaz mahal ornamental canals indola mahal gateways and bath so these are the places where you can see in this place called mandu and you can just see a jahaz mahal jahaz mahal is situated between two artificial lakes it is situated between the two artificial lakes and it is a two story building it 
this two storage building it is a two storage structure and uh, this the style of this mandu architecture is in the form of half gun so the style of architecture is the half gun architecture Uh, and so here we have learned, we have we came to know many palaces like Jahaz Mahal, ornamental canal, single Mahal, gateways, and that. But here we are going to learn is about the famous palace called Jahaz Mahal. So here Jahaz Mahal is situated between the two artificial lakes, and this is a two-story building. And when you come to when you come here when you come to the front of this palace what happens it just looks like a ship it just looks like a ship floating on river on river so the structure of this building or the jaz mahal when you look when you look towards front you can just come to know that uh, it just looks like a ship floating on a river so this is about the mandor mandu indoor so again i'm going to just give you a brief explanation mandu mandu is nothing mandu is nothing but it is a fort ancient fort alegala fort anta artha so this mandu is located in indoor of madhya pradesh and this is also called as rune city rune city is nothing but it is a wrecked or destroyed city so and you can just see number of palaces a large number of palaces like jahaz mahal ornamental canal sindula mahal gateways and but among this jahaz mahal is one of the famous palace where you can find here so here the jahaz mahal is situated between the two artificial lakes and even this jahaz mahal or the mandu is built in the form of afghan architecture afghan style of architecture and here it is situated in two artificial lakes between two artificial lakes and this is a two two story building and when you come near front when you go closer towards this building you can just see a ship floating on river it resembles to be a ship floating in river so this is about the mandu and the next one which we are going to learn is about the elora and ajanta caves so the next one which we are going to learn is about the Elora and Ajanta. Yes. So, in the last monument which we learned was is about the Mandu Indo, and now we are going to learn is about the Elora and Ajanta caves. So, before going to this, I'll just read once, children. So, just look into your textbooks. Elora and Ajanta Caves. It is located in Maharashtra. The Ajanta Caves near Aurangabad are Buddhist caves built almost 1500 to 2000 years ago. There are 31 rock cut cave monuments. The cave includes painting and sculptures, which are the finest surviving examples of Indian art, particularly painting. The paintings depict the life of Buddha and stories from Jataka Pitch. The Elora Caves, also known as Elora Complex, includes 34 monasteries and temples sculpted into rock walls of a high cliffs which are seen along a length of 2 kilometers. Around 1000 to 1200 years old, this case tells us about the artistic excellence of ancient India. The Kailasan temple at Elora, dedicated to Lord Shiva, 
is considered one of the most re remarkable cave temples in India because of its size, architecture and sculpture. It looks like a multi-storied temple complex, but it is carved out, carved out of one single rock. So now we are just coming to uh, the next monument called Elora and Ajanta Cave. So first we are going to learn is about the Ajanta Caves. So now we are going to learn is about the Ajanta Caves. Where is this Ajanta Caves located? It is located in a place called Aurangabad. So it is a place called Aurangabad of Maharashtra. Maharashtra, you all know Maharashtra, present Mumbai. So in, in the state of Maharashtra, there is a place called Aurangabad. So in this place, the Elora temple is situated. So the Ajanta temple is located. So it is almost 1500 years to 2000 years old. How many years old is uh, Ajanta case? It is about 1500 to 2000 years old. And this have the 31 rock cut cave monuments. So how many rock cut cave monuments are there? There are 31 rock cut monuments are there on the Ajanta caves. And even you can see some of the paintings also over here. So this caves, this caves include the paintings and sculptures. So children, you can just come to know. So what happens here? Now I told you that Ajanta cave is located. So it is, Ajanta Caves is located in Aurangabad of Maharashtra and the temple is, and this caves is old about 1500 to 2000 years old. And here it has a 31 rock cut cave monuments. Among, among this, the cave includes the board paintings and sculptures. You all know the paintings. And the sculptures is nothing but the carved out figures are called as the sculptures. So this this we can just come to know that when this when we are looking on to paintings and sculptures, we can just come to know this is an finest examples. So we can just give this as a finest example of Indian architecture. By seeing this, we can just come to know how our Indians were. How were the Indians were? In which type of style they built it? So when we come to case, uh, when we come to case, it is famous for paintings and sculptures, and especially it is famous for only the paintings. So here, in this Ajanta case, it gives more preference to. Paintings. You can just see the paintings. By seeing these paintings, we can depict. We can depict, or we can recognize the life of Buddha and Chataka from and stories. And even we can just depict some of the stories from. So, what happens here? So, now I told you children. So, I'm just going to give again you a brief information of this Ajanta Caves. So, we are going to learn is about the two caves, that is the Elero Caves and Ajanta Caves. Among those two, we, now we are going to learn is about the Ajanta Caves. So, Ajanta Caves is located in Aurangabad of Maharashtra. And how old is this case? How old is Ajanta case? It, Ajanta case is old about 1500 to 2000 years old. And here in this cave, you can just come across 31 rock cut cave 
monument. Among this case, you can just find out some of the paintings and sculptures. So, the uh, by seeing this painting and sculptures, we can just come to know that there were many finest sculptures or the painters of Indian architecture. So, by seeing this, these are the finest examples of Indian architecture. How Indians were, how uh, they were, how wondrously uh, they had in painting and sculptures. So, when we come to the paintings of Ajanta Kesh, we among this painting, we can just depict the life of Buddha. How did the life of Buddha went on? And even we can just correct some of the stories from Jataka. Page. Jataka, what is the meaning of Jataka? What do you mean by uh, the Jataka tales? First of all, let us know what do you mean by Jataka. Jataka is nothing but it is a childhood of Buddha. Jataka is nothing but it is a childhood of Buddha. So, the childhood stories of Buddha is known as Jataka. So, we can just depict the paintings about the life of Buddha and even the childhood of Buddha, how did he grow? Where he was born? How did he was brought up? Who were his parents? And how he was brought up? And how did he converted into sannyasi? And where did he go to attain his nirvana? So all the things will be coming in this paintings. By keeping this, by uh, observing this paintings, we can just come to know the life of Buddha. And Jataka tales, Jataka tales is nothing but it is a childhood of Buddha. So now this is about the Ajanta Caves. The next one which we are going to learn is about the Elora Caves. So now the next one which we are going to learn is about the Elora Now we are going to learn is about the Elora Caves. So Elora Caves are also known as Elora Complex, includes 34 monasteries and temples sculpted into rock walls of a high cliff, which are seen along a length of 2 kilometers. Around 1,200 years old, this cave tells us about the artistic excellence of ancient India. The Kailasan temple at Elora, dedicated to Lord Shiva, is considered one of the most remarkable cave temples in India because of its size, architecture, and sculpture. It looks like a multi story temple complex, but it is carved out of one single rock. So, what happens here? Here, the Elora caves is also known as what even it is also called as the Elora. It is also called as the Elora complex. And here you can just see the 34 monasteries. Monasteries. What do you mean by monasteries, children? What do you mean by monasteries? Monasteries is nothing but, the meaning of monasteries is nothing but, it is the buildings. So how many buildings you can just see in the Elora caves? We can just see about 34 monasteries or the 34 big buildings which is sculpted about a high cliff. High cliff, what do you mean by high cliff? It is built upon the high cliff of 2 kilometer. It is built around high cliff which are seen along a length of Kilometer. So, if this is a cliff, so we can just see towards the up of the mountain, which is about 2 kilometers, which we can just come to know the length of 2 kilometers is the rock curved, rock carved sculpture. So, you all know that the mountain contains only the rocks. So, these rocks have been carved into a new 
sculptures or the caves okay children so we can by seeing this we can just come to know that it is about 1500 to 2000 years old it is just 1000 to 2000 years old the caves is about 1000 to 500 to 2000 years old and we can just see the caves the caves tells us about the artistic excellence what do you mean by artistic excellence what do you mean by artistic excellence artistic in the sense of artist so artist can either do the paintings on the wall or either he can just make a image on the stones by uh, sculpting the image he can just make a sculptor who is a sculptor a sculptor is a person who makes out the images or the figures on the rock are called as sculptors so by seeing this we can just see the artistic excellence of india by seeing all this we can just come to know that there was an artistic excellence of our indian people and here there is a temple so in ellora cave we can just see the kailasa temple so you all know that the meaning of kailasa kailasa when we come to kailasa we can just come to know that the god the lord which god will come into your mind yes the god it's this temple kailasa temple is dedicated to lord shiva so, so to which god is this kailasa temple uh, represented it is just represented to the lord shiva and we even we can consider this is a, this as the most remarkable it is an most remarkable temple and it has many it has many storied it is a multi story temple it is a multi story temple whereas we can see many steps over the temple so that is called as multi story temple complex and this temple is carved out with the single rock so this temple is carved with single rock onde kallalli kettiranta devasana yavudu it is kailasa temple and this kailasa temple is related in behalf of lord shiva or it is dedicated to lord shiva so this is about the elora and ajanta caves So the next one is about the Chhatrapati Chhatrapati Shivaji Tanias. So the next one which we are going to learn is about the Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus. Where it is located? It is located in Mumbai. So the next one we are going to learn is about the Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus. So let us learn what is this. Actually, what is this? Yeah, we are going to learn this about today. The historic railway station Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus in Mumbai is one of the busiest railway stations in India. The station was de designed by Frederick William Stevens, an architect, in 1887-1888. It took 10 years to complete and was named Victoria Terminus in the honor of Queen and Empress Victoria, and it was opened on the date of her Golden Jubilee in 1887. 
the, this famous architectural landmark in Gothic style was renamed in 1996 by the state government of the Chhatrapati Shivaji, the famed Maratha King. So when we come to Chhatrapati Shivaji terminus, we can just come to know that this Chhatrapati Shivaji terminus is located in Mumbai, Mumbai or Maharashtra, Maharashtra capital city, Mumbai. So who built this and why? So this will be a busiest railway station. Today also this is the busiest railway station of this is the busiest railway station where people keep on moving and running over this railway station. So, here the station was, it was designed by, it was designed by Frederick. Frederick. William Stevens. So it was built by Frederick William Stevens in the year 1887 to 1888. So what happened here? So this Chhatrapati Shivaji terminus is located in Mumbai and this seems to be a busiest uh, railway station in India where you can just see the people and the trains moving all around the day. And this was first designed by Frederick William Stevens. He was a British architect. So he was a British architect or then he was a British architect or engineer who designed this Chhatrapati Shivaji terminus. So he was till 1887 to 1888. And this took, so this Chhatrapati Shivaji terminus was finished. It just took 10 years to complete. Why it just took 10 years to complete? Because it just built in a large way. So that is why this monument took 10 years to complete. And why it was built? So it was built and it was named as Victoria Terminus. What it was named? It was it was named as Victoria Terminus. Why was it named as Victoria Terminus? To honor in order to honor the Queen or Empress Victoria. So you all know that Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria was a Empress or Queen who was ruling India over in last last uh, days of India. So what happened here? William Frederick Stevens built this Chhatrapati Shivaji terminus and he named this terminus as Victoria Terminus. Why did he name this Victoria Terminus? In order to honor Victoria, the Queen Victoria or the Empress Victoria. To honor in the name of her, so he just named it the Victoria Terminus. And here, this was opened. This Victoria Terminus was opened in the year 1887. In the, it was open in 1887 of date of her golden jubilee. Golden jubilee is nothing but 25 years is called as golden jubilee. After 25, after uh, that of Victoria, that is after uh, her uh, 25 years on her date, this Victoria terminus was opened by Frederick William Stevens in the year 1887. And after the, after the Britishers left India after 1947, in the year 1996, 
in the year 1996 this victoria terminus was named as chhatrapati shivaji terminus why it was named as chhatrapati shivaji terminus why any idea children why was it named chhatrapati shivaji terminus because here shivaji chhatrapati shivaji was a famous maratha ruler he was a famous maratha ruler when he ruled, ruled over india so he just fought the against the marathi uh, marathas so and he was, even he was a famous uh, maratha ruler among the king who was he he was a king chhatrapati shivaji so due to in presence of him uh, uh, in the memory of chhatrapati shivaji this terminus was named as chhatrapati shivaji terminus in terminus in the year 1996 and this is built in the form of gothic style gothic style is nothing but which the romans built it is the roman style of architecture gothic style is nothing but it is a roman style of architecture so this is about the chhatrapati shivaji terminus so the next one which we are going to learn is about the so the next one which we are going to learn is about the meenakshi temple so the next one which we are going to learn is about the meenakshi temple so now i am going to read once you just check out your textbook or see your textbook but meenakshi temple madurai one of the best examples of dravidian architecture is the minakshi temple in madurai in tamil nadu it is dedicated to lord shiva and goddess parvati the highlight of this temple are the 14 highly decorated and carved gopurans or tubs so now we are going to learn is about the minakshi temple so this minakshi temple is located in madurai of tamil nadu so where is this temple situated minakshi temple is situated in madurai of tamil nadu so it is situated in south india a where is in south india it is situated in tamil nadu a place called madurai what is the special what is the speciality of this temple so when we come to this temple we can just see the temple is built in the form of dravidian style it is just built in the form of dravidian style and this temple is look is dedicated so this temple is dedicated to who it is dedicated to lord shiva and and goddess parvati so you all know the lord shiva who is lord shiva and goddess parvati lord shiva is the husband of goddess parvati or goddess parvati is the wife of lord shiva so this temple is dedicated to lord shiva and goddess parvati and the year the highlight the highlight of this temple is the 14 highly decorated what is the 14 highly decorated and carved gopurans you all have seen the gopurams in uh, in the sense gopurams is nothing but the 
ದೇವಸ್ಥಾನದಲ್ಲಿಂಗಿರುತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಹೋಸ್ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಯುವರ್ ದ ಮೇನ್ ಹೈಲೈಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೀನಾಕ್ಷಿ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಇಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ದ ಮೇನ್ ಹೈಲೈಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಫೋರ್ಟೀನ್ ಹೈಲಿ ಡೆಕೊರೇಟೆಡ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಕಾರ್ ಗೋಪುರಮ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಟವರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಗೋಪುರಮ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಬಿಲ್ಟ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ದೇವಸ್ಥಾನದಲ್ಲೂ ನೋಡಿರ್ತೀರಾ ಲೈಕ್ ಕಾರ್ ಗೋಪುರಮ್ಸ್ ಆ ಒಂದೊಂದು ಇದ್ರಲ್ಲೂ ದೇರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಎ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಡೋರ್ಸ್ ಓವರ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸಿ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗೋಪುರಸ್ ಈ ಗೋಪುರಸ್ ಎಷ್ಟಾಯ್ತಿರುತ್ತೆ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಅ ಮಾಂಗ್ ಫೋರ್ಟೀನ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಫೋರ್ಟೀನ್ ಅಷ್ಟು ಟಾಲ್ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಗೋಪುರಸ್ ಆರ್ ಟವರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೊಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಮೀನಾಕ್ಷಿ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೊಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಮೀನಾಕ್ಷಿ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಧುರೈ ಇನ್ ತಮಿಳ್ ನಾಡು ಅಂಡ್ ಇಯರ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸಿ ದಟ್ ಬೈ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ಪೇಂಟಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಕಾವಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ನೋ ಹೌ ಡಿ ಲಾಚ್ ಯು ಹವ್ ಮ್ಯಾರಿಡ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಪಾರ್ವತ್ ಸೊ ದ ಪಿಲ್ಲರ್ ದಿ ಪಿಕ್ಸ್ ದ ಸೀನ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ವೆಡ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೀನಾಕ್ಷಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸುಂದರೇಶ್ವರ್ ಸೊ ಸುಂದರೇಶ್ವರ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಆಪನ್ ದ ಈಚ್ ಕೋಪುರಂ ಡಿಪಿಕ್ಸ್ ದ ವೆಡ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ವೆಡ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡರ್ಸ್ ಮೀನಾಕ್ಷಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸುಂದರೇಶ್ವರ್ ಮೀನಾಕ್ಷಿ ಇಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ನೇಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪಾರ್ವತಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸುಂದರೇಶ್ವರ್ ಇಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ನೇಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಶಿವ ಸೊ ದ ಈಚ್ ಕೋಪುರಾಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಗೋ ಟು ಈಚ್ ಕೋಪುರಾಸ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಡಿಪಿಕ್ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ರೆಕಗ್ನೈಸ್ ದ ವೆಡ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಶಿವ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಪಾರ್ವತಿ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಮೀನಾಕ್ಷಿ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ So, the next one, the next one we are going to learn is about the Brihadeshwara Temple. Brihadeshwara Temple. So, where is this Brihadeshwara Temple located? So, I just read out once, you just see your textbook shall so that you can just come to know and even you can learn once of your homes so bradeshwara temple tanjavur the bradeshwara temple in tanjavur is an excellent example of the marvelous work of the architects of chola period the vimana temple tower is 100 feet 30 meter high and is the tallest in the world There is a big statue of Nandi the sacred bull carved out of single rock measuring 16 feet long and 13 feet high at the entrance the entire temple structure is made out of granite this temple is a perfect example of the dravidian style of architecture so the uh, so this is the thing which i learned i think you can just understand some of the things in this but i'm going to explain what are the main famous about this temple so bhuteshwara temple is located in a place called tanja tanjavur of tamil nadu and again again we are learning the first temple which we learned is is was about the minakshi temple so minakshi temple is located in madurai of tamil nadu so in the same way here we are going to learn is about the bhuteshwara temple which is again located in south india of tamil nadu where it is located it is located in tanjavur of tamil nadu so and we can just come to know that it is a marvelous work 
it is a marvelous work it was been a marvelous work during chola period so what happened you, you can just come to know that uh, when you go to higher classes you learn about some of the dynasties like uh, mauryan empire uh, gupta gupta dynasty maurya dynasty kushinas uh, this were the dynasties which were ruling north india whereas we come to south india we can just come to know more about the dynasties like chola dynasty pallava dynasty hoysala dynasty etc so many dynasties were there among south indian dynasty the one among this dynasties were chola period or the chola dynasty who was the famous king uh, during this chola period he was there was a king called raja raja chola and his son rajendra chola so this were the two main famous rulers during this chola period so raja raja chola and rajendra chola so raja raja chola started to build this bhedeshwara temple who who built this sad bhedeshwara temple it was this bhedeshwara temple was built by raja raja chola okay and you can just see give an example for this marvelous work and you can just see a vimana vimana is nothing but it is a temple tower where this temple tower is going to measure is about 100 feet which is 30 meter high so children you can just see in this bhedeshwara temple you can just come to know that there is a vimana vimana is nothing but the temple tower so when we come to this temple tower we can just measure the temple tower uh, measuring 100 feet it's full long 100 feet measuring 30 meters high and even we can just say this this is the tallest tower all over the building all over the world so this this was a marvelous sculpture which was made by cholas or the raja raja chola during that period and we can just say that it is the tallest in the world so this sculpture is the tallest in the whole world and you can just see uh, in this temple near bhedeshwara temple we can just see a big nandi 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 gotala ellarigo the meaning of nandi nandi is nothing but hasu a big bull so nandi is nothing but it is a big bull where we can see or that it was sculpted over one rock measuring 16 feet long it measures about 16 feet long and 13 feet so we can just see this nandi which is outside the temple when we go inside the temple do uh, entrance mundene there is a big nandi called big bull where it is carved out with single rock one rock measuring about 16 feet long and 13 feet high and this temple this whole temple is carved out with granite rock all the sculptures over in this temple is carved out with the granite rock and we can just say this this is an perfect example we can just say that it is an perfect example for it is an perfect example for dravidian architecture for the children it is an example for perfect example for dravidian architecture so this is about the 
ಬ್ರಿಟೇಶ್ವರ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ So I think you understood all these things which I explained to you now. So I'll be just giving you a small assignment. On Wednesday you have to get for fractions. Hard pitch. ಜಹಾಜ್ ಮಹಲ್ ಜಾತಕ ಔರಂಗಾಬಾದ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ So, I just read out one children. O-R-N-A-M-E-N-T-A-L. O-R-N-A-M-E-N-T-A-L. Ornamental. Second one, J-A-H-A-Z. Jahaz, M-A-H-A-L. Mahal. Jahaz, Mahal. J-A-T-A-K. Jataka. next one a u r a n g a b a d aurangabad next the fifth one m m o m o n a s t r i e s monasteries sixth one is g o t h i c gothic g o p u r a m s gopurams eighth one m a r b e l l o u s marvelous ninth one D R A D I D I A N Dravidian 10th one B I M A N A Vimana Okay children these are the 10 words and you are going to write this 10 word for five times Okay so this is the assignment which i have given for today and i'll be leaving the class for today so i hope you all understood whatever i did and if any doubts during the correction that you can just come and clarify your doubts and i'm leaving the class for today children thank you